So I am going to talk to you about the ideal solution. So solution by definition is a mixture of A and the B mixtures. Okay? And uh, A is our notation throughout textbook, this is a solvent. And B is uh, using the notation for solute. Okay. So by definition, more fraction of A come kind of in the limit of one, close to one, whereas uh, XB is close to zero. So this is a sort of the kind of the tone that they, they have it over there. Have you heard about ideal solution? Have you heard about the ideal gas? Right? Everyone heard about ideal gas. Now I'm talking about ideal solution. And in a very simple way, ideal gas is good. Ideal solution is not good. Okay? It's not really widely applicable solution uh, theory. This, this one seemingly very simple because it's not good. Okay? It applies only a very limited case. And this is I want you to understand. In the limit of uh, where your composition is close to a pure solvent, and then your description <coughs> of solution works really well. Okay? So the ideal solution is also known as solution following Raoult's law. Okay? The Raoult's law, if you can explain that, this is very, very useful. And Raoult's law is partial pressure of A is composition of A in the solution times partial pressure or the vapor pressure in the star. Okay, so this is the Raoult's law. This is, the beauty of this is simple. Okay? And what does this star mean? This star means we are talking about pure A. Pure, pure component of an A. And so that's a, the star means. So let me give you a pictorial way. So let's say this is a pure A. I didn't, I'm not doing any mixtures yet. And I'm going to go to the mixture. So this is a pure. And then I, I have this container. Everything is A. Okay. What's my vapor pressure here? Using the notation. PA. In pure state? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the, with the asterisk, okay? with a star, right? PA star, pure. So this is the vapor pressure of PA. So we all know this. This is a very easy experiment to do. And now I'm going to put, let's say, a small amount of the B. Still, A is a dominant, right? But from time to time, you have a, this annoying B is in the mixtures, okay? And I'm, I'm just going to say, well, A will still vaporize going back and forth. They will establish their, their partial pressure in mixtures. Okay. And then I'm saying to you that PA, so vapor pressure, is I'm just looking at the property of the liquid. This is a liquid property. And I'm going to say in the mixture composition, as far as A is concerned, mole fraction of the A. So what I did is, this is a property in the vapor. Okay. And then this is a property in liquid. Okay. Mole fraction of A times the, the vapor pressure you're supposed to have when your XA is 1. Sure. So this is what the Raoult's law is. And the Raoult's law itself proclaimed that it is widely should be available in wide ranges. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to uh, say this is a, this is a, in reality this is true. But I'm going to just show everything works in the same way regardless of uh, A or B, whether it's solvent or solute throughout the entire uh, chemical composition. Okay. 
So I want to describe this to you, saying that okay, so mu a liquid. So now we are. I'm talking about liquid phase and the vapor phase, so a gas phase. So the chemical equilibrium between these two, and I can use the same uh, logic that I did before when they are pure. So this is a one establishment we are dealing with a pure liquid and a, a pure gas when they are in equilibrium. So this is, I'm not going to the, uh, the, the mixture yet, but this is what I have. And because we have an expression for the gas chemical potential, so now I'm going to just say you know, there will be a gas. I think I told you before, before I talked about this is correct and sometimes uh, people uh, shorten this term by saying, and can I just write PA star, this equation, when PA star is in bonds. Right? So this is not, not a pressure, it's a normalized pressure with respect to P standard, okay? So then this is a make my equation uh, to be easier to deal with because this is going to go away anyway. So that's the first equation that I was able to do. And then now mu A liquid is a mu A gas. So this is the same thing now. If this is a situation, the chemical potential of A, component A in liquid phase, should be in equilibrium of chemical potential of A, component A in a gas phase. So this is just the same in you here. And then I am going to write like this one. This is very similar to the description of delta G mix, so it's a nice practice for you to do, to have one. So same thing here, this is essentially normalized pressure. Okay, so I'll do it one more time, writing, writing this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this two. Uh, this is a one, this is the equation one, this is the equation two. If I do two minus one, and this one makes me mu A liquid minus mu A star liquid. Right? The difference in chemical potential in the solution state minus pure liquid chemical potential for component A. And then this is all going away. And you only left with the ratio of these two. So it is on RT. Ln PA minus PA star. This is a, as generic as it can be, but I'm using the Rouse law to make my life easy. So PA over PA star, according to the Rouse law, the ratio between vapor pressure in the mixture divided by the pure vapor pressure is a mole fraction of an A. So now you use a RP. So now you are, you are getting the equation that is very widely used for describing the chemical potential of a liquid in the mixture. So this is the chemical potential of A in liquid. This is what I want to know. In mixture, so this is a mixture. Right? As in mix. And this one is now drive as Hey, this is a, can be expressed by when you are in the pure, this is a pure, okay, plus 
RT natural law XA, which is something about the chemical composition of the mixtures. Okay, so this is the equation is so important that I want to write one more time. Okay, liquid. This is a liquid. So th I want to know the chemical potential of component A in the mixtures. Uh, this is, if you know your pure component of an A in the liquid, and just multiply by RT natural law, what, let me know what's the chemical composition of it. So this is a really the, one of the important chemical potential equation is following the solution following the ideal that ideal solution law or law. Uh, so this is good. And now I'm going to do this. And do it this way. So this is a chemical potential for ideal solution. And then I am going to draw the actual example. So let's think about mixtures of A and B. And then here I'm going to show you the example of benzene. This is benzene. And then methyl benzene. So do you know chemical structure methyl benzene? Benzene with a methyl group, right? I don't know why. What do you do? You, do you know what we call in the organic chemistry? Do we call this as a methyl benzene? Sounds so old fashioned. We call this as a toluene. Have you heard about that? No, this is toluene. So toluene and benzene mixtures. And this is uh, actually the one, I would say one of the exceptional examples that are following the ideal solution. Okay? This is the one that following this. And, and um, um, so let's just let me let me show you what this really means. Something that is following the Rouse law. Which one is a higher boiling point? You know, benzene has a boil, higher boiling point, or toluene has a higher boiling point. Hmm? Benzene. Benzene. The rule of thumb in the boiling point is the bigger the molecules are, they are capable of, of you need a high energy to vaporize. Right? The bigger the molecule, they have more chance to vapor, the polarize their electrons, so there's a lot of more interaction in between. So, uh, in my case, this is a Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to draw this. So my A is a toluene, methylbenzene. B is my benzene. And so, once again, XA plus XB is supposed to be one in the liquid, right? So this is a property in the liquid phase. Got that? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw <coughs> this diagram. <coughs> my diagram choice here, what's my choice here? 0 to 1. What would be a good choice for me to understand this ideal solution behavior? Is chemical composition mole fraction of an A. That's all I will do. And then this is a, what is what I call the pressure. Because we talked about Rouse law, Told you that okay, the vapor pressure in the mixture is XA PA star. Remember that? So I am going to show uh, this is a case where actually through entire composition they follow the, the arousal. So what that means is soda solute. I can I can do that, okay? And this is an actually exceptional case of toluene and benzene 
that follow throughout the entire xA starting from 0 to 1, right? or xB starting from 0 down to 1. Right? So this is a case where everything behaves the same way. OK, so the one thing that important here is to notice here, right? This, this position. I have 100% A, right? So what's my vapor pressure? PA star. Right? If I'm here, what's my vapor pressure here? PB star. PB star, right? So something that you, you know. And then what do I know is this is, which is more volatile? <coughs> this is more volatile. <coughs> All right? Okay. If you look at the boiling point, this has a higher boiling point. Lower boiling point means they are like to vaporize. So therefore, which one has a higher vapor pressure? The one that more volatile. So this one is, has a higher boiling point, right? So a higher vapor pressure, lower boiling temperature. So if I compare this versus this, which one has a higher vapor pressure? Benzene, right? There's that. So therefore, I can see this one should be here. And this one should be here. Which is A is a polluent, 100% lower boiling, lower vapor pressure. This is a B, which is a higher vapor pressure as a pure compound. And if you're looking at the Rouse law, here, right? P, let me, if I draw the PA, they are saying to me that this is what the partial pressure of an A in the mixture. The picture that you can imagine here once again, you have an A, B mixtures. And then you will certainly have an A, B in the solution. And then the, the vapor pressure come describing the what's happening in the gas phase and what's happening in the liquid phase so this is an equation they're putting the bond together what's happening in the gas what's happening in the liquid 